that is just a disgrace to say someone might ethically only live to be 22 and uh, there are people who want to prevent them from experiencing love and sex the most beautiful things that you can experience uh, how can someone not know what their sexuality is at the age of 19 of course they know what it is whether they want to acknowledge it is another matter how they've explored it is another matter but you are what you are blanche so it's very very i find that very dark i knew exactly what i was when i was 16 15 14 13. i know less less what i am now and i'm nearly 50 and that's because i don't need to know exactly what i am i see a flower i smell a flower i don't like it i see a flower i smell a flower i do like it and i you know so I'm not frightened, really. I'm not frightened. I used to be. I understand, because I used to be quite frightened when a woman came on to me. It's like, oh, God, what's going to happen here? She's going she's gonna to attack me and rape me. No, she's not. She fancies me. That was my fear. That was my fear. And I think half of this is all just people's fear wrapped up in things. I managed to do, like with pubs with the Barney Moe and that, a wonderful thing, which was to go dress up as a woman, one of the most special women that ever lived, which was Judy Garland, and then just jumped the fence because she was so powerful. And there's only really from the last century, Judy, Elvis, Frank Sinatra. And then you come down so far emotionally and uh, in an imitational kind of way. It's so much down there. Um, those people, if you do them and you get it right, you can actually smash every barrier in the pub, especially Judy. And uh, so I suddenly found out that um, dressed as Judy, going between shows, cab drivers were after me like mad. I was so busy at one point that I would just drive from one venue to another. I'd get cars pulling up and I discovered a whole other world, the TV world, where men have feelings for women, uh, men have feelings for guys dressed as women. That was a real opener and I didn't have any feelings to attach to it at that time. It was quite weird. I had to get over my own strange feelings about wearing female clothes. Um, and the other one with that was, because um, you just talk not to. And the other one with that was my family were by and large okay with it because he's being Judy Garland. And I think if I just sort of said, well, I quite actually like to dress like this. Well, I don't think there'd be, um, I don't think they'd be very happy with it now. But because it was sort of for work, because it was somebody famous, um, there was a sort of excuse to to do it. And I love being Judy, and I, Judy was wonderful. Petula Garland was wonderful too. I was sober. I I worked all over the country. I went to Spain, and I went to... Um, New York, I sang in San Francisco, I didn't quite get what I was doing because my Judy is now, I'm going to do Judy Garland in two weeks time for charity called ELOP, the East London Out Project and uh, I retired from the stage about eight years ago to just reinvent myself another time um, and also because that era really to try and earn a living is gone. I think that singing that sort of stuff in pubs it's too posh now it's too posh judy garland is too jazzy she's been dead 40 years her songs are 80 years ago she was born nearly 100 years ago i think 80 80 or 90 years ago judy was born 90. um we've got liza her daughter who's still alive um and lorna her other daughter who sings brilliantly google her but that's an era gone and I still I've got another 20 years to live. So I went to college and uh, uh, trained uh, to be a psychotherapist in, um, I just finished this year. And that's sort of a spiritual as the Judy connection. I changed my life because the therapist sat with me and gave me everything, gave me gold dust and uh, gave me permission to live. Um, just held out a hand while I was going into something. Do you know what? I was so afraid of it all 
I was afraid of what I didn't know, and actually once it was there, it's nothing. It's, not, it, it, it's just the fear of it was much bigger than than the shit. Um, I'm saying this because I want you, if you need to, to go do it. Don't, don't. It'll be all right. Um, you can't do it on your own. If you can't find your way, how are you going to find the way to find your way? It doesn't work. But you go and find someone that does. Start with the Samaritans or something like that, or your doctor. And uh, um, there's loads of things uh, to to help with uh, problems. I think letting go of drink was very hard for me because it's like this is all I've got. I don't know anything else that will take this away and tap pills and things. So, so what am I going to do if I haven't got this? Um, eventually, it was so hard to continue feeling hungover, being broke. Uh, and it was just so shabby and horrible that I just jumped. They wouldn't get off the Titanic because they didn't believe it would sink. But they certainly did as she went down. But it was almost too late. But there was plenty of room on the, on the, the life rafts but it was the fear of going into this tiny little boat and seeing where it would go and they just said this can't go down and that that's a fact um and so sometimes just the leap and uh, and if you just make a few phone calls um there'll be somebody there just a hand comes out that's my experience and uh um i'm sad I won't kid you, I'm sad that I'm nearly 50 and that my singing career is over. Um, I couldn't do it every night now. My voice still works perfectly, but not... Have you ever noticed how old stars only come on and do one song? Um, it wouldn't sustain. I couldn't do five gigs a week now. Um, and I don't know if I want to, because it's a hard life. If you want to get into this... My pointers are, and I know what I'm talking about, so I will give advice. What do people want? Don't just do it for you. What do people want? It's Friday night. They want to be um, entertained. So what does that mean? They want you make them laugh. Make them laugh. On Friday night, it's a really hard night to do a gig because people want to find someone. They want to get off with someone. They are angry, pissed off, and everything. So they want to get drunk. Or these days are high or something. So I take the edge off. They want to find a shag. They want to get rid of a bit of that energy and dance a bit. And they want an act to come on that doesn't take anything uh, from them. They So you're going to give to these people a gift. Your gift is that you get paid. And the intention. We all love attention. But that's not really what it's about. You won't be successful if it's about attention. They'll smell it. If it looks difficult for you, they, they won't like that. You must make it look easy. It must look easy. Because they will feel very uncomfortable if they watch you struggle. And you might think, as I have done before I got good at it, that they will think, come on baby. No. Only Judy could do that. And Judy could do that struggle because she had been so good and effortless for 20 years that when the end began and she was finding it hard to hit the nuts, everybody said, come on, Judy, we're with you. But by and large, people don't really want to do that. They will erupt because of your brilliance and because you've lifted them. They need to be lifted. They are the public. And so think about what people want and uh, you've got more of a chance of getting your show to be successful. And the other one is a calculation. How many times will this show play at a venue? So Judy played 10 times at each venue for six, seven years. And then that was it, they'd seen it. And it began to go, not Saturday night, not top slot, but Friday, could you do a Thursday, give you 70 quid. And I changed it then to become a thing called the Brit Girls, which was from the 60s, what I knew, because in my blood, I did Cilla Black, Sandy Shaw, Dusty Springfield, Petula Clark, uh, and Lulu. And I, I had this sort of board with prongs on and their wigs, and I went along, and it was a real cartoon character sort of set of them, except for Petula, who I put my heart and soul into. Um, and it didn't have anything like the impact. It did very well. It lasted about 18 months. But uh, there's Judy. And then there's everything else. And I knew that. There's Elvis. 
and then bless him there's cliff and the difference between the two is huge there's the beetles and then there's the stones the beetles have sold a billion and the stones have sold 500 million it's so far removed they're still huge there's madonna and then there's kylie and madonna is so huge and then kylie comes in amazing at the underneath and so if you were to do one of those you'd soon see the difference of the impact and so that that's when i, I stopped at about um in 2002 um because i didn't have anywhere else to go i can't do kylie i can't do I, I, any boom 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 music it's just bores me actually um repetitious beat music and songs that are made to dance to bore me and uh i did do uh, the Kylie can't get you out of my head as a guy and it had a big thing it was like this old duffer is doing this song but oh it goes on the other one is that the the, the older songs are around two and a half three minutes and the new songs are around four and a half minutes I mean it's a they do just they're made to dance to not to perform and so that's where I am really what I ended up doing I think my life has been about fulfilling little journeys so I wrote a novel, I've got one on the shelf somewhere, I wrote a novel in 2002 when I was 40 about a beautiful bodybuilder and a, a, uh, who was a ghost and a faded pop star, I wonder who that could have been and I wrote myself up a little bit, gave myself a couple of hits and then in, in 2009, or 2008 but 2009 it came out, I wrote the biography, can you pass me that one, of, of the suite and I think that's just something my message just do it have a go so I wrote the biography of um, oh emotional of of my favorite group the sweet when I was a little boy and all my hard times and all my unhappiness and everything uh, I went back and I found the good parts and this man had a very hard life and he died when he was 52 uh, of previous alcoholism and things and what he found was that um, stardom doesn't fix you like a gay pub it's not psychotherapy and it's not a doctor or anything so he became a very big star with the suite and uh, um, the, the, the success was too hard on him he drank a lot and then the failure that always comes I failed my acts went you know they all do everybody's act goes and uh, always remember that when you start a love affair when you start a, a career when you release a record or anything it's going to go up but it will go down I mean people will tire of it and it is very hard you it is personal they don't want me anymore and they never really wanted me they wanted something I did that made them feel happy and um, and I did that 